Flash games. Nowadays, they are a little more than a historical footnote, thanks in part to Flash's few security issues, as well as the wider availability of actual game engines. But they were once ever present, and some quite influential. Take, for example, Crash the Castle and Age of War, which inspired many popular mobile games, or Farmville, a game that championed equality in access to video game addiction. And let's not forget that many of today's most prolific artists would struggle to pay their bills, were it not for the generous support of men who spend their formative years in the Newgrounds adult section. Truly, the Flash era was the wild west of independent game development, and though most of what got created were derivative go as far as you can, beaten ups and for some reason dress up games, there were many diamonds in the rough full of original ideas and clever design decisions. Welcome, my name is not yet decided, and over the next few minutes I'll be taking a closer look at Amorphous Plus and attempting to explain why it works so damn well, as well as why this cursor is so huge. Oh, right. The basic premise of Amorphous is extremely simple. You play as an unnamed protagonist who wields Splattermaster 3000, a thing that's too big to be called a sword, and your mission is to kill giant enemy blobs called Gloopos. There are no HP bars, both you and most Gloopos die in one hit, and there are no combos or abilities. Your only combat option is to move out of the way, swing and splat, and it is precisely in this simplicity where the genius of Amorphous lies. The behavior of a single Gloopo is fairly predictable. The biter bites, the grinder grinds, and the grey grazes, I guess. But when you set the spawn limit to 20 and get surrounded by 8 different types of aptly named Gloopos, you will realize that the simplicity is long gone, giving way to complex, emergent, and most importantly, challenging mayhem. There are only two game modes with three difficulties each, as well as a practice tool, and honestly, that's more than enough. Let's talk supporting systems. Right from the get-go and up until you've experienced everything it has to offer, Amorphous guides you and keeps track of your progress by the means of awards that you receive during gameplay. Actually reminds me of Call of Duty, except it came out four years earlier. Interesting. Anyway, every ten medals give you a key which unlocks a gadget that you can equip to use in subsequent runs. Now. Meta progression is the time-tested industry standard to make roguelikes more sticky, but what is remarkable about this particular implementation is just how effective it is in giving the player a sense of pride and accomplishment without actually being too impactful. While a game like Hades can struggle to provide a smooth difficulty curve because later stages expect a certain level of progress, Amorphous simply caps the power of unlocks with inventory slots, which means progression is horizontal. Once you've gotten your second slot, which will happen at around 20 minutes of gameplay, your character has pretty much peaked and every additional key feels like a bonus, an opportunity to test a new fun combination, rather than a requirement that gates further progression. When it comes to the story, there is sadly none. That's not to say that a player is left in the dark when it comes to the nature of the blob conflict, no, but the lore comes in a form of descriptions and beastier entries instead of a more traditional storyline. This means that it's entirely optional. It's there for you when the gameplay proves too hectic, or when you need help with a new kind of enemy, but you can just as easily skip it if you're not the one to read flavor text, and you won't be missing too much. Now. Before I finish this unbiased and entirely original review, I have to talk about possibly the most subjective part of any game, the soundtrack. In Flash games these tend to be quite varied, ranging from insanely memorable 7 second loops and triumphant orchestra arrangements to the one techno track that was most famously used in the Impossible game. And yet, Morphus is unique even in this diverse landscape, as it is probably the only known example of action-packed gameplay meshing with intricate electronic jazz. While some speculate that the chill ambiance works to counterbalance the occasional rage-inducing RNG, I am of the opinion that the soundtrack is simply full of certified bangers. Whatever the case, it's a near certainty that Revolution Void's music will make you vibe. 
unless you're allergic to 28 kilobytes per second bitrate. And even then, through the use of modern technology, I replaced all of the tracks with higher quality versions and made it available in the description. Finally, let's get to some of the negatives. Getting stable FPS requires a sacrifice of either resolution, quality, spawn limit or your firstborn son, which is a shame because the game actually looks quite presentable with everything maxed and I have no sons available. Another problem is that in order to change orientation you have to move. In 99% of cases this isn't a problem, but it's possible to chain together two frame perfect swings and it would be nice if the second one was in the direction the player intended. And so with these faults in mind, Amorphous just narrowly misses a perfect score and gets 17 out of 18 glupus. Actually, scratch that, this song is just too much of a banger.